what I um, titled this talk is Lessons from the VUI, from Training to Practice. And uh, I wanted to share a little bit of uh, an insight on um, what my uh, crazy experience was at the VUI and the things that were going on at that time and how I uh, truly benefited from the, uh, the innovative activity at the VUI and how I was able to incorporate this into my practice. So, you know, being, you know, I feel like life is often about being at the right place at the right time. And I certainly was at the VUI at the right time. Uh, I came from Philadelphia um, and spent six years, 2002 to 2008, uh, at Henry Ford Hospital. I spent, of the six years, an 18-month dedicated fellowship in robotics. And, uh, you know, we were there at this golden time where the uh, volume was unbelievable. And uh, during the peak years where uh, we were doing approximately 800 cases a year. Thank you. <clears throat> and uh, we had a lot of uh, patients that were not only local, regional, but also a lot of interstate and international patients that were flying in for surgery. Um, and, you know, although Dr. Menon is uh, known for his contributions in robotic prostatectomy, he really was an advocate for robotic surgery and just really trying to uh, figure out how to apply the robot in other areas of urology. Um, and so he was uh, very uh, visionary, not only in, in the prostate program, but also pushing for uh, the uh, kidney applications, cystectomy. Um, and uh, we had a unique opportunity back in uh, 2006 and 2007 to uh, help formalize the kidney protocol with Intuitive. We had the opportunities to use our labs for porcine and cadaver uh, studies uh, using multiple robots uh, with uh, their engineers and equipment at the disposal to figure out what was the best way to approach a kidney. Uh, we, at the same time, also had uh, cooperatives uh, going on with uh, Dr. Gonim in Mansura and uh, in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and where our periods of, I would say, the growth uh, curve rapidly expanded. Um, and uh, as, as residents and fellows and trainees, we just had these unique opportunities to travel worldwide and follow on the coattails of Dr. Menon and Dr. Peabody uh, to uh, go and do live cases and present. Um, in addition, what was going on at Henry Ford Hospital amongst the multi-specialties as they noticed the activity going on the robot and the multiple systems that were available was that there was also time for collaboration with the other departments. And so I had a very unique ability, uh, opportunity to go into the GYN rooms and uh, see how they were applying uh, robotics and to help them through their uh, growth curve. Uh, I've been at the bariatrics doing um, partial hepatectomies with, uh, with the hepatobiliary surgeons, uh, donor nephrectomies um, and adrenalectomies. I remember as a chief uh, going in and helping one of the general surgeons do a distal pancreatectomy. And, uh, um, you know, there's a benefit for going in there and operating in your usual area of, of operative field, but then also to go uh, just outside of that area where you're not supposed to venture and get an opportunity to, what, to, to see what that surgery looks like and what those plane, surgical planes look like. And it helps kind of open the limits of your dissection and understanding of the anatomy. And I remember one of the scariest operations I've been in where we're cross-clamping aorta and uh, doing aorta bifem, uh, bypass graft uh, with the vascular surgeon. And I, rem I remember this quote where uh, we were trying to do robotic kidney surgery and I was trying to tell Dr. Menon I didn't think this was a good idea and he just turns to me and I, it just rings true in my mind, uh, especially as I look at my practice right now. And he said, Danny, one day, this is not just gonna be robotics, this is just gonna be urology and how true that's been in my career path. I currently practice at the University of Pennsylvania at uh, the oldest hospital in the nation founded in 1751. And this is a current, and the, I apologize about the small uh, font there, it may be hard to read, but these are over 30 procedures I've been able to produce with the robot, and it goes along the same lines that uh, Ronnie Abaza had, just trying to open up your mind and seeing how you can apply this technology. Um, there is uh, very few limitations if you allow yourself um, and, uh, and, and think through the procedure, how you could do it in your mind. And with the skill sets and with the proper training, you can do a lot of these operations safely and provide better care for your patients. Um, there's uh, been a lot of developmental work that we've done also in the area of um, robotic spine axis where we've been able to do spine fusions instead of uh, opening the patient's stem to stern in the midline, but being able to open up the inner atrocaval axis and being able to do minimally invasive uh, fusion anteriorly. 
So the lessons I've learned from uh, Henry Ford, not only was it a, a, a wonderful place to train from a volume standpoint, but Dr. Menden was also very instrumental in teaching us technique and anatomy. Um, learning to study the anatomy with your eyes, finding the proper surgical planes, and once you learn that, you know, it doesn't matter if the platform changes, that the, the, the robot goes through different iterations over the generations, but if you understand the anatomy, then you keep uh, the ability to operate efficiently uh, and to do good operations regardless of the technology. Um, currently, I'm um, at the University of Pennsylvania. I have a hospital that has only one robotic system. I'm still able to do three to four cases routinely, um, and I'm currently doing about 300 cases a year. Uh, prostatectomies, um, as our bread and butter from uh, Ford, uh, average is 90 minutes. Partial nephrectomies are usually under 90 minutes um, with very short, uh, warm, uh, warm ischemia times. Adrenalectomies are routinely, uh, or partials are under an hour. <clears throat> we uh, see a high uh, volume of Jehovah's Witness patients. Um, I operate on a lot of hostile abdomens, previously radiated operation, uh, um, bellies. I've operated on BMIs as high as 71, and just able to confidently be able to do, uh, uh, you know, very difficult surgery uh, right from the get-go out of training because of the tools given to me at Ford. Um, I'll show you, I'll, I'll, I'll end this talk um, with a couple of uh, videos that I'll show you um, on some different uh, uh, operations, things that I didn't necessarily do um, in residency, and I was able to take the tools that was given to me and then apply them to other, other operations. Um, but the, the key point here being is that I was taught the skills to be able to do these. It's a 27-year-old patient with a, a stage one non seminomatous germ cell tumor. Um, we did a right uh, modified uh, RPL, template RPLND on him. Here uh, we have the uh, cava exposed as I'm uh, doing a split and roll on the IVC. <clears throat> Again, this is uh, not a procedure that I learned um, via robotic technique during residency, but this was something I was able to apply um, after uh, learning how to uh, operate uh, efficiently um, and uh, learning how to, uh, one, understanding the anatomy and the surgical planes, and then being able to apply this in my practice. I'm going to just speed the video up a little bit here. So here, this is the inner right of cable access. And here you can see uh, uh, the sympathetic chain, and you can see the branches coming off L1 to L4 behind the cava. You can see all the nerves here have been identified and spared. Uh, the retroperitoneum is completely cleaned out on the side. We're spraying Evacel. The operation took about three hours, 100 uh, cc's blood loss. Uh, patient went home on day one with no drains. Uh, this is also something a little bit different uh, where I've collaborated with the neurosurgeons uh, at the University of Pennsylvania to do minimum invasive uh, spine access. I alluded to this earlier. This is an uh, anterior uh, surface of spine that you're looking at, the anterior ligament. Um, this is aorta and uh, the bifurcation uh, with the vena cable over here. And we're a completely inner aorta cable. We've put in, uh, clips down on the lumbar branches and we've completely mobilized these vessels. And we're trying to open up this area of access so that we can drill down, take a, a core of spine out, and then uh, put a fusion cage down. Because the robot is not FDA approved for neurosurgical uh, procedures, uh, we do the exposure uh, and the approach robotically, and then we switch over to laparoscope uh, to do the fusion portion. Here again, I'll, I'll forward this and speed this up a little bit. So here you can see my right side robotic instrument completely underneath the cava as we lift it up. I switch over to my left hand, we bring over red rubber catheters, and then uh, I use Keith needles to pierce them, and then send them back out the body laterally so that the assistance on, on demand can uh, open up the uh, inner, inner aortic cable space uh, so that we can go ahead and put drilling software, uh, hardware down.
this is uh, here we're using a pituitary to uh, start uh, the incision on the uh, anterior ligament of the spine, and then you know, this is drilling software, um, hardware uh, to uh, make the proper space so that we can put the metal cage down. And uh, this is bone morphogenic protein going in to complete the fusion. And so, um, it's. Um, I, I want to th uh, thank you.